Good morning, parents, carers, and our future year sevens. Welcome to your session today, which is titled Mark Making with Music. I have no idea what it means to mark, make with music, but not to worry, Miss Atkinson is going to take us through today's session and she's going to be schooling you for those of you that are not familiar with making art with music. I'll now pass you over to Miss Atkinson. Over to you, Miss. Afternoon, evening, everyone. My name is Miss Atkinson and I'm an art teacher here at Bexley Heath Academy and we're going to be mark making with music. So if we can go on to the next slide. Okay, so we're going to be doing our do now task, okay, which is a three minute task where you're going to have three minutes to answer three questions based on our artist Kodinsky, okay? So you're going to be looking at this image that is on the screen for you and you're going to be asking the three questions so question one explain what the image is of okay so can you see any familiar objects so we need full sentences okay for the answer question number two to identify the secondary colors that you can see within the artwork and then question number three, how do you think this artwork has been created? So what media has the artist used? So do you think they've used paint, colouring pencils? What do you think the artist has used? OK, so you're going to have three minutes to write a sentence for each question and then we'll go over the answers. So, Miss, can you start the timer for us, please? So grab a pen. One second, Miss, just to, in to interrupt there. Right, guys, I almost feel like I didn't give you enough time to go and get yourself ready, okay? So you have, before you start, Mrs. Tars, go and get your list of equipment that you would need. Miss, if you just tell them exactly what they would need for this session, have everything next to them, and then as soon as they're ready, as soon as the minute is over, I will then carry on and give them um, today's Slido poll. No um, worries. So you're going to need some sheets of paper. You're going to need a pencil and a pen and then either colouring pencils or felt tips, whatever you have available, okay? So whether it's pens, felt tip pens or pencils, colouring pencils, anything you have with colour and then a pen and a pencil, please. So give you one minute to go and collect that for you and then we will get started with those three minutes. Miss, the slides are not on the screen for us to see. Oh, okay. Let's grab your paper and your pencils and felt tip pens, any colors you wish to have. You could even get different colored sheet paper if you have anything at home. I'm using yellow paper, but if you have just white plain paper, that is completely fine. So a couple of sheets of A4 paper, maybe about five sheets of paper would be perfect. So hopefully you've got that all ready to start our session. I'm going to grab a few more pieces. Okay, I think we're more than ready. 
Okay, so as you can see, here is your Slido, so your QR code for this session. So parents, carers, year six, you might be invested in this. So for example, I will be struggling with scanning this. Um, if you can get the phone and turn the phone to the camera, and all you would need to do is hover the camera over the QR code. So the QR code is this robotic symbol. You should have almost like a drop down menu. Click on that. If you've got any questions, so for example, Mrs. asked you to do a task, what you would do is you'll feed in your answers using the QR code. Now, in the meantime, what you can do is, oh, we can see those are coming through. Well done. If those of you still waiting, you'll literally scan and send in your response. Miss, I'll now pass it over to you. Thank you. Oh, if we can get, there we go, perfect. All right, so we're answering those three questions just using your pen or pencil, okay? And you have three minutes. So you've got a minute for each question. Right, you've got 30 seconds left. I've never seen three minutes go so quickly, guys. I hope you're more than ready for miss. Okay, so you should be finishing off your final sentence now. and our alarm will be going off any second. <laughs> there we go, okay, perfect. So if you could type into the Slido what you have put for your first question. So explain what the image is of. So can you see any familiar objects? What can you see? So what? can you see in that image? Is there anything in the background? What can you see? Okay, Miss, we've got um, some responses have come through. Uh, should I go ahead and... Please. Okay, so we've got um, lots of um, yes, yeah, six students saying hello. Uh, should I read those? Or should I just go straight to the task? If we can go straight to the task. 
Okay, miss. Okay, so we've got Erin um, says, in the picture, I can see different shapes like triangles, squares, and circles. Um, Ella uh, Belmont, so it's Emily from um, Burst Wood says, the image is made of shapes and colors. There's two pinks, green, brown, and three blacks. I'm just scrolling down. It's a lot of people saying hello. <laughs> um, a new print says, I think that the art has been created using paint and pencils because of the watercolor. It's a person with no name says, paint props and many more colors, brown paint. Lucy says she can see a triangle, squares, and circles also. And we've got paintbrush, pencil, zebra crossing, two green, orange, black, three paints, pen, color, pencil. That's all from one person, but there's no name attached to it. Garnet says that the image is made of different shapes and size, and for two yellow, blue, and pink and then three uh has been created by shapes and watercolors kerry ann says that she can see paint brushes and triangles mm -hmm. carly says the image using brown so we're using colors brown black and lots of others there are all kinds of shapes perfect guys those were perfect is there more still coming, Miss? There's a whole oh, long I list. Can imagine there. there must be different loads. shapes. That's from Sergio. Says different shapes. Dar says we've got a lot of new names today as well, Miss. Dar says paint brushes, green and brown, and many more. For um, two pink, three paint and coloring. Anonymous says one can see triangles, circles, and squares. Uh, Alana says she can see triangles paint and pencils. Carrie Ann says for question two, um, blue, yellow and red and three to paint and pencils. <laughs> well done guys. Those were fantastic responses to what you can visually see. Okay. And um, we're going to move on and we'll go through all the answers in just a second. We're going to go over question two. So two, Oh, Miss has got the answers. So perfect sentence is, here's just an example for you. So the images of a variety of different shapes repeated such as triangles, squares, circles, which all of you have mentioned. So well done. And the center circle, if you can see in the middle, just under Kandinsky's name, just underneath Miss, if you can put your, yeah, perfect, that one, looks like a drum with drumsticks resting on top. So it does look a bit like a drum. So remember what our title is and our exploration question, which I will go through in a second. So our title is making marks with music. So, hmm, I wonder if this artist may be related to our lesson today. Okay, looking at the answers for question number two, Miss. So can you see any secondary colors within the image? So I wonder if you you've learned what the secondary colors are in um, while you've been in primary school, okay, which I'm pretty sure you have. So the secondary colors that we can see are green. We can see some greens. We can see some purples and we can see some oranges. And just as a reminder, a secondary color is two primary colors mixed together. So our green is mixed with yellow and blue. Our purple is mixed with red and blue. And orange is with yellow and red. So those are our secondary colors that I've listed on question two for you. And then finally, number three, um, I think the artist has used paint to create this piece of artwork. So those of you that have written down on your piece of paper, you think that paint has been used, well done. Okay. So our exploration question today is, to explore how artists have used music in the past to create artwork. So I wonder what we're going to be doing today. So some of our key terms is mark making, which we're going to definitely be doing. 
um, the formal element, line, color, pattern, and shape, and our media. So our media, we're going to be using either coloring pencils or pens or just your normal pencils, okay? So what is mark making? So have a little think. What do you think mark making is? How can you make different types of marks with your pencil? Okay, so have your pencil ready. How do you think you can be making different types of marks? So I've got some examples on the screen for you. Okay, lots of variety of marks. So we've got things like, let's see if you can see me. We've got lots of different type of cross hatching. We've got big dots. little dots you can even just tap the page we've got swells okay so i'm going to give you three minutes just using your pencil to practice some mark making okay so using those images on the screen how many of those can you get down on your piece of paper you've got three minutes okay to practice some marks go i'm going to be doing it with you Okay, so as many marks as you can. You can have diagonal lines, horizontal lines. You can have long lines, short lines. It could be a broken line going all around your page. So we're making as much marks, oh, there we go, as we can on that page, okay? It doesn't have to be neat, it is just mark making. You might press your pencil quite hard on the paper. You might do it softly. So different types of marks that you can make on the paper. Some diagonal cross hatching. Lots of different lines. Oh, I think our time has stopped, but we're going to still give you another minute, okay? Lots of different marks. Just practice, use as many. Oh, Miss Shallow, we can't see the screen. Perfect, thank you. Use as many as you can see on that slide to get as many marks in and try and fill your page. Okay, so I'm gonna give you about 20 more seconds. to get in as many marks as you can. You can even overlap the marks. It's quite hard to draw on an angle. But you can even overlap the marks. You might particularly like a particular mark and keep doing it all over the page, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed experimenting, creating lots of different types of marks, squiggly lines on your page, okay? Miss Shallow, if we can move on to the next slide, please. Thank you. Okay. So what can marks represent? So I know we've just done lots of different types of marks, but if we're going to be mark making with music, and I don't know if you've done this in school before, but your marks can actually represent things okay so things like your feelings and emotions so a mark may represent how you're feeling you might be feeling happy so you might use a particular mark to represent your happiness or you might be feeling sad about something something might have upset you and you might do a certain mark to show oh I'm not feeling too great like something made me sad this week or something you're proud of, excited, grateful. You might be frustrated and you might do lots of lines going down the page, okay? Marks can even represent activities. A certain mark might represent um, a sport or a hobby or something that you enjoy. Marks can be different textures. They could be really rough marks or really smooth marks. So if we look at some of those marks on the bottom of the page, some of them look really rough and jagged. And some of them are a bit more smoother. They look a bit more softer. They look like um, the one in the um, right on the bottom looks like, I don't know, like a bit like sea waves flowing, okay? So in the past, marks and lines have also been used to represent different types of movements and music, okay? 
Think about what marks can be pre um, rep can represent fast, upbeat music and slow music, soft music. So just have a little think to yourself. What marks would you use to show fast, upbeat music, really fast music and really slow music? OK, like slow, relaxing, calming music. So have a little think. Going to give you a second to have a little think. And then if you can pop it in the Slido for me, that would be great. So what type of marks do you think you would use for your fast, upbeat music? If you can pop it in the Slido, so slow, fast music, and then say what type of mark you might use. And then for slow, soft music, what type of mark could you use? Okay. If you can pop that on the Slido, then Miss Shallow can let us know what we've got. Who, Miss? <laughs> Okay. So for slow, soft music, what marks would we use for slow, soft music? Think about the slow, soft music, what type of mark would you create if you was to hear slow, soft music? Maybe something like a continuous line, just scrolling across your page, really slow, softly. You're not going to press too hard on your pencil because it's a slow, soft piece of music that is playing. So if, I, if that's slow and soft, what type of line would you or mark could you make if it's really fast, upbeat, going really quickly? Pop it in the Slido for us. Should I start reading them out, Miss? Yes, please. Okay, so let me just go to the top. So I would use cross and overlapping for happy. So I think this was an earlier... Um, oh, question. Okay. Lots of small darks, um, maybe some jagged edges. So this is from previous as well. So let me come to five. Oh, I think that might be for fast music, I think. Yeah. So yes, I agree. Lots of little dots, jagged edges for the fast, upbeat music, definitely. Okay. So Emily says that um, she would, for fast music, she would really um, use hard lines. And for slow, she would use gentle lines. Perfect. Joseph from Upland says, for slower music, maybe longer lines that flows. Perfect. And Lola reckons fast music would have, um, so fast music lines, slow music dots. Mm -hmm. Thomas um, says, fast music, quick, jagged marks. Perfect. Slow music, slow, calm lines. Carly mm -hmm. reckons straight lines or zigzags, all kinds also, she would love to use waves for motions. Oh. Um, Anuprit says that um, maybe use wiggly lines that look like a heartbeat. Monsters for fast upbeat music. Oh, I like that idea. Lucy um, says that for fast music, she would use spiral and then flow. She would use cross um, hatching. Oh. Carrie ann says she would use hatching for fast music and for soft music, small darts. Did I carry um, on, Miss? All right. We're going to stop because I want you to have a go at this, okay? So we're going to have a quick 30-second timer for these. You've got to be quite quick with what you're doing, okay? So I want you to think about different types of marks that you can represent for each of these. I'm going to tell you which one I want you to start with. So I want you to create a mark. You're going to have 30 seconds. Get a fresh sheet of paper or turn your paper over. And I want you to create marks on running on the spot really quickly, okay? So if you're running on the spot, what type of marks would you make? You've got 30 seconds. Miss, can you start that timer for us? So I want you to be thinking of marks you might make for someone that's running on the spot. So they're running, 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 okay? So lots of marks for running on the spot. Use the examples on the um, screen as well to help you. 
Okay, we're halfway through. Running on the spot, what type of marks are you going to make? Okay. All right, so that time is finished. Okay, we're going to be moving on. I now want you to create marks that represent you running around on a field. So as if you're running around on a field, lots of marks. You're going to have another 30 seconds, okay? You ready? Mm. Oh. oh, no. <laughs> time, is, time, is, time is not cooperating. It's okay. No. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get you started. So for you running on the field, okay? So marks representing you running on the field. So think about it. Are you going to be running around that paper? Lots of marks. Let's go. Let me mute myself so it's not too loud for you. Very quick 30 seconds. Oh gosh, I've been talking away and my I'm on mute. Apologies, guys. So perfect. We're gonna do our final one now and we're gonna do walking slowly. So you're taking a stroll, okay? So what type of marks for slow, steady walking? So we're gonna have another 30 seconds. Last one. Okay, so we're strolling. Slow walking. So we're slow walking. Okay, last three seconds. Perfect. All right. I'm not going to be able to see yours, but I'm going to show you mine. So for my running on the spot, I've put lots of dots. Oh, which way are we going? This way. On top of each other because they're on the spot. So lots of dots Wow. on the spot. Okay. And I wonder, we can just do one Slido for this. We'll talk, for, talk about this one. Okay. So for um, running around the field, what did you do for running around the field? I'm just interested to know. Just a quick one. We'll just do maybe a couple, Miss, to see what they've said, and then we'll move on. So, for those of you that have just joined, um, here's the Slido um, QR code. So, scan that, and you can literally um, send us messages, um, reply to Miss's questions using the Slido poll. Do you want me to read? Do you want me to read um, some of the feedback, Miss? Yes, please. Just a few, maybe maybe about okay, three. I'll scroll all the way to the bottom, and I'll just read. So, representing a calm scene, a zigzag and lines from Emily. Um, a new prism that's a representing a calm um, scene, circles and lots of dots is um, Carrie Ann. Mm-hmm. So I just read the last three bits. Okay, so carry on. No, that's fine. That's fine. So perfect, guys. For my slow walking, I just done a continuous line all around my page, quite a slow, steady line. So it, it was just a slow line going all around my page. Okay. So perfect. We're going to be moving on. And the next one. Okay. So shapes can also be used to represent different things, okay? So what things do you think could represent, can be represented by these shapes? So what do you, what emotions can relate to these shapes? So I'm gonna give you a second to have a think. So what could be represented by each of these shapes? So when you look at that yellow circle, that gray cloud, 
that pink rainbow looking shape, the lightning bolt, and that looks like a, a teardrop or a raindrop. So what emotions can be related to those shapes? Okay, going to give you um, a second or two to think about that. And then if you can pop it in the Slido for me. I've got answers coming through already, miss. Oh, amazing. Let's go. <laughs> I'm aware of the time, so that'll be perfect. So what have, what, what have we got so far, Miss? Okay, so we have got lots. So we've got uh, mountain peaks for snow walking. I guess that's from earlier, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's from earlier. That's the shape. Okay. So running around the, hill, the circle and slowly swells and curls. The grey cloud could be a grumpy and the teardrop could be sad. Yeah. Sadness for the teardrop again. So that's from Emily was the one um, that said great club and the teardrop being sad. Um, we've got lightning, angry. Lucy says the circle could be happy. Um, and we have got Thomas says sad, angry, frustrated. I guess that's for um, the teardrop. Joe says sun and rainbow is happiness. The cloud and the raindrop is sadness. The lightning is for anger. And then we've got Tate says that um, sad for the drop. Carly oh says, okay, Miss, should I stop? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to get you to do, I'm going to give you just one minute, okay, to... Pick an emotion, so how you may be feeling today or even yesterday, whichever day you want to, to represent your emotions. And I want you to think about whether you're sad, happy, calm. You might have been a bit angry about something. I want you to draw a picture using different shapes to represent your emotions, okay? You can use colour too. So let's put down our boring pencils for now and get some colours in. Draw some shapes representing, you can repeat the shape many times, so lots of circles if you want that to represent a particular thing. You may change the colour, you might do a green circle or an orange circle. Okay, I'm just going to give you a minute to get down as many different shapes as you can, okay? So I'll let you know when, when you're halfway through and then when you're on your last 10 seconds. Okay, halfway through. She's got 30 seconds left. And 10 seconds left, guys. 10 seconds to get down what you might want to have down. Okay. I've done a quick one with you. Okay. So pens down. And you might have, for me, I put some circles in, purple circles. I put some stars. You can't really see the colors very much. Some stars. And I've got like a little rainbow. So my purple stars represent the weather today so the weather was really nice and sunny so it made me quite happy okay so the sun was out so when I woke up this morning rather it being all dark and gloomy I was quite happy the sun was out jumped in my car and I was in a good mood my circles represent excitement I'm excited it's almost the weekend I can have a lay-in I can enjoy my weekend okay so I wonder what your ones were and I hope you enjoyed creating some marks with some shapes, but we're going to be moving on. So Miss Shallow, can we move on to the next slide, please? And again, okay, so 
the artist that we looked at for our do now was Kandinsky, okay? And he's a very famous abstract artist. He was also one of the artists responsible for introducing art education. He got bored of creating paintings of things exactly like how they looked. So instead he started making paintings of lines and shapes and marks to represent different things in his life. Okay, so he used to be a musician. So he used to, to, to create music. He was a musician. And then he decided to become an artist. Well, before he became an artist, he actually became a teacher and then became an artist. Okay, so he used music and combined music with art. How cool is that? So he explored color, new ways of creating art. He would often go to like operas. So he likes like classical music. So he'd often go to operas and create art while he was at the operas. Or he would put music on, classical music on and create art while he was listening to music. And color was the object and it had its own meaning. So he used different colors to represent different meanings and things related to him and his feelings. Okay, so we are basing our lesson today off of the artist Kandinsky, because we're going to be listening to some music, okay? So we're going to move on. Thank you, miss. So that's some of his images on the screen, okay? So, oh, back one more for me. Thank you. <laughs> so Kandinsky famously created paintings to represent music and the sounds he heard when he used to listen to classical music, okay? So what kind of musical instruments could represent, be represented by each of these shapes with the arrows. So the arrows are pointing at three different shapes. What musical instrument could these represent? Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna give you two minutes. I think two minutes might be too long. So I'm gonna give you a minute. So miss, if you can start the timer for me and I'm gonna stop you when it gets to a minute to have a look and just use your imagination, think outside the box, what instruments could he be representing here? Okay, give yourself, have a little think. All right, we're halfway through. Hopefully you've got at least one done. Okay, what instruments? I've got a few ideas. Okay, and once you've got them down, you can pop it in the Slido. We'll take another three from the Slido once um, Miss has a look. So you've got 10 seconds, get them typing into the Slido. Okay, what you think something can be, you can just put the musical instrument in. Okay, so that's the time done. Let's see what you think these instruments might be. Miss, is there anything in the Slido just yet? Um, a few coming through, Miss. So what I'll do is I'll just give it maybe another 10 seconds. Okay. And, okay. How many would you like me to read, Miss? Just, just two or three different ones. I'll, I'll pause the timer for now. Okay. I'm not trying to delay anything, Miss. I'm not. I'm not trying to. <laughs> okay. So we have got um, a trumpet, a saxophone, oh, a, guitar, a piano, a, rec um, a recorder, or re uh, a recorder, uh, a saxophone, a piano, cymbals, piano again, guitar. The circle could be a drum because it is loud. Yeah. I like the science, it, it, you know, in there with the loudness because you can see the vibration. I yes. love it. I love um, a violin, yes. piano again. The circle looks like a, a music disc. Mm -hmm. Tambourines. Tambourines. I was thinking of a tambourine. Keyboard, more drums. Uh, drums, a violin, a guitar, Perfect. triangle. Love it. Again. I'm going to stop you there because we've got lots to get through. 
So amazing. Thank you, guys. I think the only one I've got different that I thought of was like a xylophone of that final, the middle arrow, um, those little bumps going up across. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, guys, for your input. Amazing. So if we're going to move on now to the next slide, please. Okay. So this is where the music comes in, okay? So we're going to be, I'll let you know when to play it for me, miss, and just not yet. So we're going to listen to a piece of music, okay? So our task is you're going to have 10 minutes to create a piece of artwork representing um, your feelings, okay, while the music is playing, okay? So you're going to be making marks. So we need a fresh piece of paper. So you're going to have 10 minutes to create a piece of work that you feel could represent this piece of music using your marks. So what we need to think about is what instruments can we hear? So just like the artist um, Kandinsky used different like abstract um, shapes to represent different instruments. So what instruments can you hear? And how does it make you feel? Okay. And is the music fast or slow? So when the music is nice and slow, what, what type of marks are you gonna make on your paper while the music is slow? And then when the music starts to speed up and get fast, what type of other marks? I would say start getting together quite a, a few different colors that you would like to use as well. Because remember, Kandinsky uses colors to represent things. You might, the, even the words of the song, like, can you relate to any of the words? And then you might wanna use a particular color, okay? So get some colors. I'm going to give you literally about 20 seconds to get all the colors you want. So I've got a, a bunch of colors here in my hands. Lots of different colors. Okay. And these are to, to make my marks with. So have colors. You can even use your pencil. Okay. And a little tip. Think about applying the marks and skills we've used so far today. So you can even include those shapes, those different shapes within your work. So I want you to use your entire A4 piece of paper for this. And we're going to play the music now. So you're going to have 10 minutes, okay? All right, miss. Oh, we can't hear it. Oh, we maybe stop the timer, miss. Maybe that's interfering with it. I'm not too sure. Oh, still no. Oh, we had a bit of sound for a second. We still can't hear it. I must be Oh. If we can start it from the beginning, no worries, miss. Guys, we're just having a little bit of a technical fault. So give us a second and I'm sure it will work, okay? Sometimes this happens. Sorry, miss. Um, I've had one internet gremlin after the other. So I don't think that's going to work. If I turn the mic on, I have like feedback. Hence oh, the reason why you heard that feedback when um, okay. so I muted myself earlier. No worries. What I'd like everyone to do, okay, can you go on YouTube quickly? And can you get up? This is me, okay? I'm pretty sure everyone's familiar. It's from The Greatest Showman and it's the song, This Is Me. Okay, I'm gonna give you like a minute to get hold of that for me. Okay. So, I'm gonna give you about 30 more seconds. Everyone go onto YouTube and type in, This Is Me. The Greatest Showman. And what I would like you to do is play that song and then to complete the task. So you're going to be making 
marks while you're listening to that song the music think of the words what instruments you can hear okay when the music goes fast and slow the type of marks you're going to use use those marks that you can see on the on the um screen to help you and the shapes okay and i just want you to play the song once so it's gonna last about i'm gonna give you about four minutes okay and i want you to fill that page using all different colors all right, so hopefully you've got all your colors. You've got the YouTube video on and we're going to press play, miss. Thank you. I'm going to sing it in my head. <laughs> I'm tempted to sing it, miss. But nobody wants that. Unfortunately, I'm not a music teacher. That wasn't my talent, so I'm not going to sing it for you. Miss, I've just left a couple of chat for you to have a look. Um, they're almost like shout outs, really and truly. So take your time, it's in the chat. Um, and then maybe at the end of the session, you can read, you can read them. I love this question, like what instruments can you hear? How does it feel? Somebody did say um, that actually it made them feel um, emotional. What colors are you going to use? Miss, is there a way that if somebody was listening to music, um, so for example, if I were actually doing my, my marks at the moment, and can the music prompt feel like marking for specific color? You're muted, Miss. Apologies. Okay, so it's up to you. You might decide to use the color blue because that may be symbolizing something that maybe even it reminds you, the song might remind you of somebody and that their favorite color is blue and you decide mm. to use a blue pen to do your marks. Or you might use the color yellow because it's quite bright and vibrant and you think the song's starting to pick up, the music's picking up, let me use a bright color. So mm. it's all what you decide to use relating to your feelings, your emotions, what you can hear. You might use the color brown because you think of a um, guitar playing and you think of a, a brown guitar, okay? So yeah, it's all up to you what colors you use. You've got about a minute and a half left. I know your music's playing, so I'll try not to talk too much. <laughs> I'm doing mine as well as we're speaking. So I hope it's going well. We've got one minute left. Okay, not long left, 40 seconds. Try and fill that whole page. And I hope your music is still playing. If not, just restart it again for the last 30 seconds. Okay, we're on our last 10 seconds, guys. Get in those last marks that you would like to have in there. Three seconds, three, two, one, we are done. Okay, so I hope your page is completely filled with lots of marks, shapes, colors, 
all different colors. You might have had some of them lightning bolts in there, some of the clouds. Okay, so I've done my version of lots of marks all over my page. Oh, wow. Okay, and the greatest showman is quite interesting because the words in that song is this is me, like no matter what faults I have, it is me, and I am proud of myself, and I wouldn't change me to anyone else a million times over like it is me and I'm proud so things might have made you sad in the past or someone might have called you names but it is me and the beginning of the music starts with really slow and it's calming and then everyone comes together they're all singing together the music the instruments get louder and your marks must have been going all over the page. It must start to speed up and you could get all your amazing marks down. So I'm really looking forward to seeing these images of your marks, okay? So I hope that went well for you, okay? I'm not unable to see it at the moment, which I'm a bit sad, but I know you're gonna send them in because I saw your amazing work from last week. Miss Shallow, can we go to the what went well and even better if slide, please? Next one for me, please. Okay, so today's exploration question was to explore how artists have used music in the past to create artwork. So we looked at the artist Kandinsky, who was originally a musician and then became a teacher and then he finally went on to art and combined music and art together. So he listened to music to create his artwork, using lots of different colors, representing his feelings and his emotions, okay? So you've learned how to create different marks, what different marks can represent, like when you was jogging on the spot, when you was running around a field, they can represent different marks and then different shapes, what different shapes and colors can represent. And you've had a go at trying to create different marks. And then finally, hopefully you got your music working in the background. You managed to play a song and create marks relating to your feelings of what you can hear in that piece of song, okay? In that song from The Greatest Showman. The different tempo, how fast and slow the music was going, you'll be able to create different marks. So I wanna know what went well, okay? So what went well with your piece of art? So explain what went well. I want you to be using full sentences, okay? So in our lesson, we've used the formal element line. We've created lots of different lines. We've used colors, many different colors. We've created different shapes and patterns. When we've repeated a shape or a line many times, that's creating a pattern, okay? So what went well? So use your formal elements in your sentences. What went well with your work? And then even better if, how could your work be even better, okay? So I'm gonna give you three minutes to get two sentences down on what went well with your work and how could you improve it? What would you do differently? Maybe you might wanna use a different media, maybe you use pens and you wanna use pencils, or maybe you'd like to use paint like the artist. So you have got maybe about two more minutes left to get two sentences down. And then if you could put it in the Slido for me, we would love to know what you could do better and what has gone incredibly well for you. Okay, about one more minute. And hopefully you've got, you can just type it straight into your Slido so we can have a look. And Miss could read some of them out. Interesting to hear how you've done so far. I'm actually going to leave my piece of work up in my classroom. So all the students are going to ask what going to leave it stuck on my board and they're going to be like miss what is that and I'll explain it to them that I was listening to music and creating art they're going to all want to do that tomorrow <laughs> okay miss have we got some in the slido amazing yes we do we do we do miss 
Woo! I should drink some water first. I, I kind of feel like this is going to be a lot. <laughs> okay, let me scroll to the top. For those of you that joined today and we're not in our session last week, when you join next week, so in the next session, which is going to be on Monday, when you sign in, sign in with your name and your school as well, so we know exactly what school you come, you've come from when we're giving like saying, for example, Sergio, it'd be nice to know what school you've come from. Um, okay, so, um, Anu says, for what went well, the lines I made when the tempo raised and even better if, if she had added more to it. Emily said how what went well was she used she used lots of different colors. I can't wait to see that actually. Lots of different colors with hard and light strokes. Amazing. Love the wording. Really good sentence there. Isabel, uh, what went well for Isabel is her drawing that she did with the music. It sort of shows that it's her personality, in other words. It sort of shows her personality. Her even better if would be she'd have wanted more time. She used that she used like an emoji there, Miss. You know, I'm very old. I was like, what's that? <laughs> okay, it was an emoji. And um, Lucy said she thinks that she matched um, her matchup colours went well and that her patterns went well as well. I love the use of keywords. A color was a keyword, wasn't it? Yes, a yes it was a keyword. And um, even better if you could have added colors paint instead. Um, Isabel wished she had more time. Everything went well for Gurnick. However, Gurnick feels like he could have used more vibrant colors. Oh, lovely. And maybe use an A3 paper instead of an A4. Steffi, it would be what went on a bigger scale, definitely. I would say if you have any big pieces of paper, give it a go in your free time, definitely. That would be great. Yeah. Safi said what went well for her was her colours and her pattern. It'd be better if, if she added more colours. Emily, what she could improve would maybe to try paint. Mm -hmm. Because that links to um, what the artist used. Definitely. And then we've got Alana, could have used more shapes and more colours. Joseph from Upland, because there's two Joseph from Upland, says that um, what went well was the way he used his colours, even better if, if more colours and if he had more time. Alana says she's done a very colourful picture Amazing. Well, really I can't good wait to see them. Them. I cannot I wait to see, to see them. And it's so important to reflect on your own pieces of artwork. Okay. So it's always important. So when you're in school, we will have a section um, we'll, in the middle of our lesson. We'll have times where we'll have a stop point and we'll all have a look at our own work. And you'll have to think, what could I do better? How can I improve this piece of work? So when you're thinking that you could have used more vibrant colors, you can have the chance to do that, okay, and improve your piece of work before it's the end of the lesson. And then at the end, you can even, again, reflect on your work and see how you could improve it next time. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, make sure you send in those pictures of your images of your work. I can't wait to see them. Also, make sure you do our checkout of what we would usually do a checkout at the end of our lesson based on what we've been learning. So you have got five questions to do a checkout for us and so make sure you complete that, please. And I really hope you enjoyed this session and feel free at any time to put on some music. If you wanna unwind, if you've had a frustrating day, maybe it's a new technique you can use, put on some music, get your coloring pencils or pens out and mark make all over that paper, even if it's A3, A4, you might even just use an envelope as paper, anything you can find, make marks, mm. not on your walls. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss. Uh, miss, do you wanna read out the, I think it was two or three shout outs actually, one of them didn't have a name. Um, so, 
his artwork's a bit abstract and it reminds you of Dali, but less curvy, maybe form, I think you were saying. So the artist reminds you, I think Dali as in, is that the surrealist artist? I think maybe you may be talking about. Um, so yes, it's very abstract. So surrealism is quite thought provoking, just like our piece of artwork that we were looking at from um, Kandinsky, when you wasn't sure what it was at first, when you saw that, um, do now you might have thought oh my goodness what is that it's just a load of marks and shapes what what is that shape and then when you started to look closely you started to think oh maybe that's a piano or a violin or so yes very abstract so it is kind of similar to um and that was from uh, joseph miss thank you joseph and then obi so I have drawn some shapes like circles and rectangles. Is this from? Oh no, this is from Joseph as well. What did Obi put? I see. No, no, no. So it was when you said what, when we had the image and then they had to list all the different instruments that they could see. And it's a shame there was no name attached to it, but they said how they, they thought it was this one, Obo. How oh. you pronounce it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of the instrument. And I thought that's one that we don't really hear of often. So I thought that was a really good shout out. Um, and then the, the last one, because there's two Josephs, you see, um, but this is from Joseph from Up, um, Upland. Okay, I've got you, I understand. Thank you very much guys for taking part in our Slido and your input is very much appreciated. And it was so lovely to hear your feedback. So keep going with next week sessions and it's on monday next week isn't it miss yes it is. yes it is miss right we've come to the end of the session so in the slide i can see people asking right how do i do the checkout so what you would need to do is you would need to go on our school's website your parents got sent emails or your carers or parents got sent um an email today from myself and if you click on that link it takes you to our website however if you haven't received the email and you're watching right now and you want to complete that checkout, all you've got to do is go onto our um, website and look on the Academy Live and click on Year 6 Transition and you would see last week's video, today's session, and to today's session, there's a little descriptor. On the descriptor, there's a word checkout. Click on that word checkout, it will take you straight to today's checkout. If you found the checkout, give me a high five in the chat window so I know you've got it. As soon as you do it, you've then got to just hand it in. Okay, so Miss, you're right. Next week's session is not going to be on Thursday. It is going to be on Monday. Because obviously we know that um, Thursdays you'll be breaking up from school and you'll be starting your Easter break. So we decided to move it forward to Monday so we're not having to rush at the end of the so Monday, this coming Monday would be um, the science. It will be a science club. So do come ready. I'm not sure what the science scientists have got planned for you, but as you can see, just like from today's lesson, it will also it, it is going to be another wow session. Now, what you can do because we're not running any exclusive um, sessions at the moment. So what you can do is you can invite your friends as well. So your friends are not coming to us. They wouldn't emails that you've received so tell them go on um his academy's web page and look for academy live click on that and click on transition and they should be able to access next week's session as well so you can all partake and have you know your friends come in and then i'm thinking maybe at some point we might do a you know primary school competition with these checkouts to see who submits the most checkout, who gets the highest points. And I can email your primary school just saying, just so you know, you are fully represented and your primary school came first in the checkout. Could be. If you would like to see that, pop that into the Slido. And from myself and from Miss, Oh, it's Serge, uh, somebody's birthday next week. Serge, it's Serge's birthday next week. So happy birthday in advance. Happy birthday. But it's next week, Thursday. So see, we're not going to be having the session on Thursday, so you can enjoy your birthday celebration on Thursday, Sergio. Okay, Miss, that's it from us. So all your completed pieces of work, do not forget to put them to myself. That's I, shallow at 
fxphacademy.org and we're looking forward to receiving them. So when you send them to me, Miss is the one that's going to email you back with feedback. So we get, I get to look at it first. I get so excited. Um, and then Miss will then go back and give you feedback on your piece of work. And you might become famous one of these days. <laughs> this piece of work. All right, guys, have a lovely, lovely evening. Thank you for joining us in today's session. And see you on Monday. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.